In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the vector interrupt controller inside LPC 2378. So the vector interrupt controller it can take up to 32 interrupt inputs. We call them interrupt channels. So there are channels from 0 to 31 and can map them to either IRQ or FIQ. So all these interrupts by default, they have some hardware priority and that's what is shown here. So the highest priority by default is to watchdog timer and the lowest priority is to I2S. Okay, so to demonstrate the use of vector interrupt controller and how to write interrupt service routine, I'm going to take the same example that we did last time, which is the DAC. So remember, for using DAC, I wanted to create a sine wave and what I did was I used the match mode of the timer to decide when to sample that sine wave uh, to get that curve. Okay. So what we did was we configured the match register. We enabled interrupt in the timer. Here you can see match control register. We enable the interrupt, but we are using polling mode. So we went to this infinite loop and there we are waiting for that interrupt bit to set. And then we are doing this calculation. So instead of polling, now we want to do the same operation, uh, which is generating that sine wave, but using interrupt. So I will be writing an interrupt service routine for the timer. And what happens is uh, whenever an interrupt happens, that is when we are going to do this, not by polling. So let's look at the step. So first of all, we will write the interrupt service routine. Uh, then we will see like how to link it with the vector interrupt controller. So what should happen inside the interrupt service routine? As I mentioned, whatever is written here, that should be happening in the interrupt service routine. So let me remove it from there and this polling also because I am no longer polling. So essentially after doing all these things, your processor is simply waiting in a loop. Uh, instead of that, if you prefer at this time, the processor can be doing some other thing. And only when the interrupt happens, when the interrupt comes from the timer, that ISR will run and he'll be doing that conversion. Okay, so let me write the interrupt service routine. So there is a specific syntax uh, for writing ISR. ISR is also functions, but you need to tell this is an ISR to kill. For that, you need to always prefix uh, double underscore IRQ with your function. After that, yeah, it's just like a function return type, your ISR will always return void, irrespective of any microcontroller or microprocessor. When you write an ISR, your ISR is not supposed to return anything because nobody is explicitly calling this ISR. Okay, The interrupt is causing the ISR to run. So once ISR finishes, he comes back from the point where the interrupt happened. So it is not always a fixed point. That's why it doesn't make sense to have any return type for ISR. So after that, you need to give some name to your ISR. So let's call it like, okay, this is timer zero ISR. Uh, this is explicitly for match operation, but it's good enough, uh, timer zero ISR. And your ISR, again, it won't take any parameters. So these two will be always void. Inside that, okay, you can write whatever you want to do. Now, here I'm writing one to that timer to acknowledge, okay, I have seen the interrupt and clear the interrupt flag. That better we do it at the end uh, so that we acknowledge the interrupt after processing that interrupt. That's it good thing. Another error that is coming here, yeah, this T is declared here. So we need to move that also from that to here. Okay, so once we are done with that, he is happy. Now we need to link this interrupt service routine with the interrupt from timer. So how to do it? Uh, we'll see. For that, we need to know the uh, some internal details of our VAC. So basically, first of all, you need to map your interrupt to either FIQ or IRQ type interrupt. By default, all interrupts are mapped to IRQ, so we will keep it as such. So that is decided by this interrupt select register, so we are not going to touch it. Next one, you will have to enable the interrupt. Okay, so interrupt is enabled in the interrupt enable register, and that register has one bit corresponding to each interrupt. By default, everything is disabled. So we'll have to set bit four of that register to one to enable interrupt from timer zero. My intention is to have interrupt only from timer zero. So I'll make only this bit one and I will make everything else as zero. If something else was one before, I will make them also 
as zero. So if you go to the header file, and search for VIC, this is the registries for vector interrupt controller. So here you will see uh, VIC interrupt enabled. This is what we need to enable the interrupt. So where do we enable it? Okay, before starting the timer, we will enable that interrupt. So this will be, okay, uh, this one, everything else zero, that will be hex one zero. So that configuration we have done. The next configuration that we need is, yeah, you need to tell what is the priority of this interrupt. So now there are some default priorities here, as you can see, 0 to 31 is a default hardware priority, but this priority can be changed from software uh, between 0 to 15. So 16 priority levels. By default, at the beginning, all the interrupts will be having same priority, which is like 15, the lowest priority. If you want to give higher priority uh, to an interrupt, that means you want to alter this default priority configurations, uh, you will have to write in the vector priority register. I don't want to change the priority level. Or if you wish, okay, I can demonstrate uh, how it can be done. So we have separate registers for doing it. Here, this one, VIC vector count. So if you want to change it for timer, you will have to do it for vector priority uh, four. Okay, so here some things are written. The name convention below is from previous family. The new ones they are using this one. Okay, so you can take that priority since timer is interrupt number four. Uh, you can take it and you can assign some higher value there. Let's say one. That means he has like very high priority. Zero has the highest one. Uh, maybe we won't assign that, and we are assigning just one to that. Or you can keep it at the default value also, no issue. So another one that you need to do is the vector address. Okay, This register basically should contain the starting address of the interrupt service routine. That is very important. So we have already written the interrupt service routine. So wherever this interrupt service routine will be kept in the memory, that address should be stored in that register. Uh, here you can see we have VAC vectored address 4. That is for timer. Again, so each interrupt has one uh, register dedicated to do it. There we have to store the starting address of this function. Then how do we know like where this function will be stored? So I, I hope you know that in C, the name of a function is nothing but the starting address of that function. Okay? Essentially, the name of a variable is the address. It will be translated uh, by the compiler. So this you can simply write as the name of the function. Okay, don't put brackets after that because if you put brackets after that, you are essentially calling the function and assigning the return value here. Okay, here just use the function name uh, which will be replaced by the starting address where this function is stored. Okay, so at compilation time, he will store somewhere and that address will come here and it will go here. So we need to declare the function at the beginning. So same syntax you can use for declaration also. Okay, so here there is a warning uh, pointed to integer convention volatile sign to void void. Okay, so this guy, if you see here, he is expecting an unsigned long type uh, by default. The addresses are uh, int type. So you can simply do a type casting to avoid that warning. Even if you don't do it, uh, it's perfectly fine. Everything will work. So we have done that part also. Okay, so basically you have to do only this much. Yeah, enable intra, uh, configure FIQ, IRQ, store the vector address, and configure the priority if you want to change the default priority. Now once you do this much, okay, interrupt is linked with the ISR, and we are good to go. Okay, let's compile and run. The logic analyzer I have already added our V out last time itself to see. Let's look at the DAC also. So this is our DAC. And let's look at the timer also. So timer zero is what we are interested in. And let's look at the VIC also. Vectored 
intro controller so we have everything uh, first of all let's try step by step and see what is actually happening timer configuration we have enabled the interrupt and reset on interrupt both are there then okay match value we set now look at the vectored interrupt controller so when this line is executed you can see timer zero now interrupt is enabled you can see it now priority by default you can see all of them are irq15 that is like uh, from software it is configured to lowest priority all of them but once this line is executed timer he became the one with the highest priority now when this got executed you can see there is this address vector address okay uh, that became 160 hex so let's click on this so that we goes to the timer specifically so here if you see vac vector address 4 that became 160 so these are specific to timer and this part is like the global registries of the uh, vac so timer interrupt is enabled this is the address so if you go to the disassembly window and click on your irq first line you will see like that is starting at 160 okay so that's why that address got configured in that register and this step uh, we already know reset timer start timer and after that we should be getting some interrupts okay so while the code now the code is running you can see okay match is blinking sometimes and interrupt came here also interrupt is checked that means interrupt came but it didn't get unchecked it is not getting unchecked this is not becoming zero if this line got executed it should have been happening so interrupt is coming but it is not going to interrupt service routing so we need to do one more step whenever you are writing irq or in general also uh, if you are using irq specifically you should go to project and go to options and under linker you need to check this option use memory layout from target dialog what this is exactly doing you can read in the manual of keel so unless this is not done that isr mapping won't be happening properly okay so that is done now let's come back again okay let's run again this time you can see it is coming it is going okay so we are going to isr that is when we are acknowledging the interrupt that is when that one is going back to zero and here you can see there is a bit raw interrupt that is blinking so raw interrupt is a register okay which will become one whenever an interrupt comes from the peripheral which is enabled the specialty about raw interrupt is even if the interrupt is not enabled for that particular channel still the corresponding bit will set okay because he is sitting before this interrupt enabled register so he is also blinking you can see so all interrupts look fine but in logical lisa you will see yeah nothing is happening we don't have sine wave it is constantly one that's because we made one more blunder so if you look at the code okay previously it was working now it is not working uh, that is because of this line okay so previously we have the variable t so that each time I see the timer match happens, I increment the T and I will do the recalculation. Now T became a local variable to our ISR. So each time ISR is called, T becomes zero. And when you do this calculation, V out will be always V max. That's what you are seeing there. V out will be always 1.65. So what should happen? T shouldn't be a local variable. If it is a local variable, as I mentioned, yeah. It will be always stuck at same value so we can put it as a global variable and let's see what happens that means it will be initialized only once after that yeah its value will be incrementing from this function and it should work this time let's see and yes now it is working as expected okay so everything looks fine but let me add one thing here in programming in general using global variables is highly discouraged it's a very bad idea to use lot of global variable this float we kept as a global variable only because we can see it in the scope once you are happy with your simulation uh, before putting it into hardware we will put it back we will compile again 
and only then we will send that code to our actual microcontroller. So here, what you can do, you can keep it as local, but what you need is you don't want it to reinitialize each time the ISR is called. So if you again know about C programming, you can put the qualifier static. So once you declare it as a static variable, it will be initialized only once when the function is called the first time. After that, the variable won't be called. Okay, so we need to do that. One more thing that we need to do when we write ISR is we need to acknowledge this interrupt service to the VIC also. Okay, so here it is written like uh, there is a register called vector address register. Okay, this is not same as this register that we have seen. Uh, each IRQ has a separate vector address register. In addition to that, there is a kind of global register, a single register called vector address register. So you are supposed to write some value there. It could be any dummy value so that the VIC understands like you have serviced this interrupt. This is important. If you have more than one interrupt mapped to the same priority level, uh, he can go to the ISR of the next interrupt. Okay. Without this operation, he doesn't know like whether you have finished uh, with servicing, whether you have finished servicing this particular interrupt. So this step is also important. Uh, this time we didn't have any problem because only timer is mapped to priority one. There is no one else and no one else is raising interrupt also. So it worked perfectly fine. Practically that might not be the case. You may have concurrent interrupts. So in that case, it becomes very important. So here, uh, it is simply VIC vect address register and let me simply write zero there and let's compile and okay debug and let's run everything again and this time again we have the same output but this code is better and since we moved the variable inside the function okay so let me show one more feature of VIC before we end. So inside VIC, there is a register called software interrupt. What this register does is it can emulate interrupts coming from hardware. So suppose you wrote your ISR everything and it is not working. So you don't know whether the issue is coming from your ISR or whether the issue is coming from the main code. You are not sure whether your code is really going to ISR. Uh, suppose what happened was you forgot to write this line to enable intro. Maybe that's why it was not going to ISR. So you want to check whether your ISR is okay or not. Okay, And you want to isolate the problem. That is one scenario. Another scenario is you have some peripheral, but you don't really have a situation where that peripheral can raise the interrupt but without that you need to test your ISR so somehow your ISR should run in that case what you can do you can write one to the corresponding bit in this software interrupt register its structure is exactly like this so if I write one to bit four there it will emulate an interrupt from the timer the interrupt is not actually coming from the timer but it is coming uh, through software through this register and you will be able to see whether your ISR is working fine or not. So what I will do here is, okay, I have disabled the actual interrupt from my timer. And here I will go to this software interrupt, this one software interrupt register. And there I will write 0x10 fourth bit. So writing once to that register is e enough. Because once that register is written, it will raise an interrupt. You will go to the ISR. When you come back, he will again raise an interrupt. So you don't need to write it inside while loop. Even if you write it outside while loop, uh, this is good enough. So it will keep on generating that interrupt through software. So let me compile again. So remember from hardware, there is no interrupt now. And let me go to debug this time. And when I run it, Okay, I'm still getting sine wave. That means my ISR is perfectly fine. Maybe it is not going to the ISR because I haven't done something in my main code. That will be my conclusion. Okay, same example. If this was not there, what will happen? You will see like the output is permanently low. That means it is not going to ISR. Okay, so my conclusion is 
if it went to the isr yeah isr is working fine the problem is it is not going to the isr the, so that should be uh, somewhere in the main code then maybe finally i will find out okay it's because i am not doing this one and after that i might solve my issue okay so that's it this is about our discussion on vic uh, you can try enabling multiple intra from multiple peripherals at the same time and having multiple iaq at the same time and you can see how he handles it so for every iaq as i mentioned it should be prefixed with this one and at the end you should acknowledge it and in the main code you should enable that corresponding intra if you wish you can change the priority or this is optional but the address of that irq should be configured in the vectored address of that particular peripheral thank you